You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. The options market can be a confusing place. Sorting through the daily avalanche of data, alerts, updates, articles, and analysis to find the most important information is an overwhelming prospect. But now you have help. Welcome to the Options News Rundown, the only program that breaks through the noise to bring you the most important news and information from the world of options. Every day, we bring you the top five option stories curated by the options experts at theoptionsinsider.com, the premier source for options information. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider. And now it's time to break through the noise. It's time for your Options News Rundown. Good morning. Today is Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019. This is your Options News Rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli. Our first story of the day is from investing.com and it's the top five things to know in the market on Tuesday. The first is U.S. stocks simmer at record highs. After the S&P 500 closed yesterday at record highs, thanks to the agreement to restart U.S.-China trade talks, Buying enthusiasm ran out of steam on Tuesday with U.S. futures pointing to a slightly lower open. European stocks struggled to maintain gains as enthusiasm ran out and additional pressure was seen from U.S. tariff threats. The pan-European stocks 600 edged forward just 0.1%. The second thing to know today is U.S. proposes tariffs on $4 billion worth of EU goods. The U.S. added more products from the European Union to a list of goods it could hit with retaliatory tariffs in a long-running transatlantic aircraft subsidy dispute between Boeing and Airbus. The list of $4 billion worth of EU goods includes olives, Italian cheese, and scotch whiskey. The World Trade Organization had ruled that the EU subsidies to Airbus violate international trade rules and is expected to decide this summer on the amount of countermeasures the U.S. can impose. The U.S. claims the subsidies cause $11 billion worth of damage to the U.S. economy. The third thing to know is oil drops ahead of production cut rubber stamps and U.S. inventories. Oil prices moved lower on Tuesday as markets awaited the final approval on the decision by OPEC and its allies, known as OPEC+, Plus to extend their production cut agreement for another nine months. With expectations for a deal to go through without a hitch, market focus will shift to weekly U.S. inventory data amid forecasts for a third straight draw in stockpiles. The American Petroleum Institute will report its data on stockpiles at 4.30 p.m. Eastern ahead of official government data out Wednesday. U.S. crude oil futures fell 21 cents, or 0.4%, to $58.88 by 5.31 a.m. Eastern, while Brent oil traded down 19 cents, or 0.3%, to $64.89. The fourth thing to know today is Australia cut rates to a record low. The Reserve Bank of Australia cut interest rates to a record low of 1% overnight in the latest round of central bank easing that has taken hold amid fears of trade uncertainty. RBA Governor Philip Lowe explained that the move was designed to support employment and help inflation move towards the bank's target. In the U.S., the Federal Reserve is under similar pressure to move forward with a rate cut at its next policy decision, although Fed Funds futures 
have fully priced in a quarter point reduction at the July 30-31 meeting. The recent trade truce between the U.S. and China caused markets to tone down their call for a half point cut. The fifth thing to know today is Bitcoin falls briefly below 10,000. Bitcoin hit $9,766.20 overnight on its fourth straight day of losses on the investing.com index, 30% below the 2019 high of $13,929.80, reach reached just six days ago. Despite the correction, the altcoin remains well above 7,888, where a two-week rally began on June 11th, up 176% so far this year. Bitcoin remains well below record highs of nearly 20,000, reached in December of 2017. Bitcoin was last down 8.1% on the investing.com index to $10,270.90. That was around 5.33 a.m. Eastern Time. Our second story of the day is from openmarkets.cmegroup.com. Will the Fed cut rates in July? Six key dates to watch. CME Group's FedWatch tool expects a rate cut soon. The Federal Reserve meets on July 30th and 31st to decide whether to cut rates and, if so, by how much. While some more vocal members of the policy-setting Federal Open Market Committee are ready to accommodate the White House and or the bond market by cutting rates, others may be more data-dependent, meaning they want to assess and analyze the latest data to see if there are any signs of economic weakness. Here's our take on what the data releases in July 2019 might bring. And this is the CME Group's take. So they are looking at, and I'll just sort of summarize here, the July 5th jobs report. Data from the May report surprised with a relatively weak job creation number of 75,000 monthly jobs data zigs and zags. Low numbers are often followed by a rebound, and that's what seems most likely. Uh, the June Fed minutes. The Fed decided to take a much more dovish tone at its June meeting, in line with the market's consensus that it was time for a rate cut. The July 11th Consumer Price Index announcement. The best estimates put the general inflation rate right around 2%, give or take a tenth of a percent or two. The core inflation rate, including, excluding energy and food, is expected to be two-tenths lower than the general rate. These numbers are way too close to the Fed's 2% target to argue for any rate action. The July 16th retail sales report. The consumer sector makes up two-thirds of GDP, so these numbers are important. The July 26th Q2 GDP we're looking for numbers between 2.75% and 3.25%. Again, definitely not indicating immediate economic weakness. The July 30th PCE price index. The last piece of information on the price index arrives just as the FOMC starts to meet on July 30th. The personal consumption expender, expenditure inflation reading is typically a little lower than the consumer price index, so it's more like 1.5% or so for core inflation. Longer run economics. Even though we see the lagging second quarter economic data is relatively healthy, we expect a deceleration of real GDP in Q3 and Q4. This is more like a slowly evolving deterioration rather than falling off a cliff. The trade war is taking its toll surely, but slowly. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is news you can use for today, Tuesday, July 2nd, 2019, your options news rundown. I'm Dan Passarelli, Trade Smart, and have a great day. The Options News Rundown is brought to you by Market Taker Mentoring, the leader in options trading education. Get trader education, daily trade ideas, and more with a free one-week trial of Market Taker Mentoring's Live Advantage Group coaching class by visiting markettaker.com slash insider.
The preceding program was a production of the Options Insider Radio Network. For more quality options programs, visit www.theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app, available in iTunes and on Google Play. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at twitter.com slash options, facebook.com slash the options insider or via questions at the options insider.com.